we're going to evaluate the derivative of 1 over x squared using the limit definition of the derivative, the limit of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a as x approaches a. This is the derivative, f of x in our case, of course, is 1 over x squared. If you're more familiar with the h approaching 0 definition of the derivative, check the description for a link to my lesson introducing this equivalent form of the derivative. Sometimes this one is easier to work with. Once we've evaluated this limit, we'll have a function completely in terms of a, which tells us what the derivative of 1 over x squared is at any value x equals a. So we'll begin by just plugging in our pieces. We have the limit as x approaches a of f of x which is 1 over x squared, minus f of a, which is 1 over a squared. And of course, we have x minus a in the denominator. Now, the occurrence of 1 over a squared, we can see clearly that a must not equal 0. Otherwise, none of this is going to make any sense. This function is not defined nor differentiable at 0. The next step we'll take from here is to combine these two fractions, so we're going to have to give them common denominators. To do that, we'll multiply 1 over x squared by a squared over a squared, and we'll multiply 1 over a squared by x squared over x squared. Then they'll both have denominators of a squared times x squared, and that gets us here. a squared over a squared x squared minus x squared over a squared x squared. We, of course, still have x minus a in the denominator. Now that these have common denominators, we can combine them into a single fraction. That gets us here. You can see, then, we have a squared minus x squared in the numerator, and that is a difference of squares, so we can factor it. We have 1 over a squared x squared, we're just pulling that out, and that leaves our difference of squares, a minus x times a plus x. Now the a minus x, we can almost cancel out with the x minus a, we just need to take out a negative so that these things will flip around. And that looks like this. We just take out a negative, and a minus x becomes x minus a. You can see if we distributed this negative back through, we'd get negative x, and then we'd get plus a, and it would look just like that again. So by taking out the negative, we've swapped the x and the a, and now it's clear we can cancel it out with the denominator. And once we cancel those out, all we're left with is the negative a plus x times 1 over a squared x squared. And now, remember, we're assuming that a is non-zero. We can just plug a in for x. Plugging a in for x gives us negative a plus a, which is negative 2a. And then we have 1 over a squared times a squared. That's just 1 over a to the fourth. So then a factor of a will cancel out, and we finally end up with negative 2 over a cubed. Thus, we've proven the derivative of 1 over x squared is negative 2 over x cubed, which, if you prefer, you could write as negative 2x to the negative 3. So the slope of the line tangent to 1 over x squared at any point, say, x equals a, can be found by just plugging a into this function. You'll get negative 2a to the negative third power. That's the slope of the tangent line. That's the derivative. That's how you find it. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and check out my Calculus 1 course and Calculus 1 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.